Hey guys, welcome back to the Off Grid Cabin. It's Friday and it's beautiful, sunny, cool, you know, 45 degrees. And uh, decided to come down and get some work done. Unplug from YouTube and all the craziness that's going on out in Oregon and around the country and just focus on what I need to do to continue to prepare. So, as you can see, got my beehive today. I'm gonna set that on the blocks that I showed you back there and I'm gonna make a reducer. I hope I do that today, I might not. I'm gonna make a reducer for the uh, front of that beehive. Make it easier for them to defend. Uh, so the goal today, and this is gonna be kind of a psychological win for me, because a lot of the work that you do when you're setting this off-grid place up is stuff that you know you can't see a finished product but today I'm going to attempt to stain the um, front porch the front deck here and I'm gonna probably get to the outside as well if at all possible see how that comes out and you're gonna be able to see an immediate change when you do this so that's a psychological win when you're doing stuff like that down here um, midnight looks like it's working a-okay I'm going to be putting a larger fuse in line so I can uh, fully bring in all the all the watts. I I got it choked down to 30 right now because I have a 30 amp fuse, so so it's uh, the the midnight's choked down to 30 amps coming in. Uh, but the batteries are full; they're in float mode, and um, we're all good. So I'm going to do that. What else am I going to do today? Set up the beehive, like I said. We'll see. We'll see what else I get done. I might fire up old Buck and start dragging all this stuff that I cut down out of here in preparation for uh, the camper. And, and uh, you guys suggested, and absolutely, these, these logs, these um, trees, I'm going to cut them up and put them in the roadway there and start corduroy on the road. Um, another thing I'm going to do before I'm all finished and start laying dirt over the top of it and sand over the top of this corduroy is I am going to uh, put some piping in there like a culvert and see if I can get some of the water draining underneath rather than eroding away. Another thing that I'm going to um, do is I, I contacted the uh, county yesterday to see if they had free mulch because uh, I am hip to this back to Eden Gardening. Again, thanks to Granny's Homestead for pointing me in the direction of that movie um, all about uh, back to Eden Gardening and it looks like a real winner. And she's not the only one that mentioned it, but she's the one that kind of uh, spurred me to go look at this video, and it was awesome. So the garden is gonna go in here. The dirt looks good. I'm gonna uh, use pine needles, because that's what I have to go over the top of it for cover. Uh, but I'd also love to get a bunch of free mulch. Here's the pine needles I'm gonna rake up out of there. A Bunch of free mulch to put down, and I'll use that mulch as a cover for the roadway as well to stop erosion. Um, I think it would work great in there. So if I can get a free source of like just dump truck loads of this stuff, I'll be using it all day long. All right, stick around. I'll see if I can do uh, some video of this in process. you're enjoying the time lapse I kind of like how that looks the time lapse is coming out kind of cool this is what I got so far I think uh, I started doing around the edges and up the posts 
But I think I'm going to leave that for my son. I'm a big, you know, big picture kind of guy. I'll leave the details to him. I'm going to try to get, you know, knock out the floor, let it dry so I can get the stuff back in. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to run out of stain or not, so I want to get the floor done. Here's the not so finished product. Pretty good. And it's got to dry. And it's still got a lot of stuff I got to do on the inside. Got to bring the DIY kid down here. I'm going to start calling him the nook and cranny kid because he's going to be like an English muffin getting in all the nooks and crannies. Um, with whatever you know I had left over, there's just a little bit left. I just kind of use it on the front face. Some of these boards out here. So anyway, the floor is done, and uh, obviously got to do the post yet and do the pieces that I couldn't get to with a roller. You know, the detail work. So uh, I'm bringing my son up here Sunday, and uh, the goal was to not have a complete work day. It was going to be kind of a little bit of work and some shooting and riding wheelers and having fun. Um, but it looks like we're going to take a little bit of time away from that and do a little bit of work here too. So I'm going to put him to work here. And uh, I got other stuff I got to do, so I'll get back to you in a minute. All right, so there's the hive. I got it on blocks. Um, from what I'm reading, and by the way, I did order uh, beekeeping for dummies. It should be here, I think, Monday, so I'm going to read through that. From what I understand, you want to get it about 18 inches off the ground, so that's not high enough. I'll probably add another block. Um, and the reason for that, I'm told, is because skunks love to obliterate uh, hives. So they'll come over. Start banging on the hive and then just sit by the entrance or the exit in this case they'll do it at night and every bee that comes out to protect the hive they just eat but if you put it up about 18 inches the skunk has to come up on his hind legs and that leaves his belly exposed and uh, that's the part the bees will go after and run the skunk off so you want to keep it 18 inches off the ground for that reason there might be other reasons um, but that's it seemed to make sense that's what I heard and, and, and that makes a lot of sense so I'll put another block on it. It's facing kind of south, uh, let me think, southeast. So I'll probably move it more that direction with the opening because I'm told that it's the uh, opening should probably face south. Again, I'm, I'm talking without really knowing what I'm talking about, just things that I've heard on other um, websites, on other YouTube channels where they seem to know what they're talking about. But one thing that I did learn is if you ask uh, 10 beekeepers, an opinion you'll get 12 different answers so if you guys have an opinion please share it and I want to share with you guys a couple other tools or preps I picked up this past week one of them is a 30 inch magnetic floor sweeper I got this well frankly I've wanted one for quite some time but reason being is that a construction site guess what happens you lose nails you lose screws they fall on the ground and then guess what else happens you step on them you drive over them, you get flats, you get tetanus, whatever. Um, so I pick, I pick this up, on an even ground, but I'm going to use it to kind of go over. Oop, I already picked something up. Picking up a lot of stuff. You should probably, a lot of this stuff is probably bullet casings, shell casings. But I'm sure that I also, I also, um, put wood in here that had nails in it and now that I took the pit out I don't want to be driving over that stuff now I came out last week got home noticed I had a flat tire pumped it up the next morning flat pumped it up again and uh, it's been fine ever since so maybe when I was driving over uh, this mess of rock and concrete and whatever maybe I, I popped the uh, what do you call there? Not the seal. Oh gosh, I can't think of the word right now. But anyway, it seems to be fine now. See, it was that rear wheel there. So it's been pumped up, it's been fine. So, anyway, I'm going to use this. Now, I'll show you the other prep I got. The reason why I got this was because of Southern Prepper 1. This is a great tool to have. It's just a, uh, it's just a wheel. Count how many feet you're going. Now, why would this make sense? 
Well, again, in a construction zone, it makes a heck of a lot of sense. For instance, when I was measuring 39 feet for that trailer that I want to get, um, it was a real pain in the tuchus. But for this, you're real easy to measure 39 feet. But when he was talking about it for a prep, it made a hell of a lot of sense. Because, man, when you're looking to defend a compound, you want to count out your distance to, uh, to certain targets out in the field. You know how far you're shooting. So you do this ahead of time. Count out, you know, 100 feet, 300 feet. Um, also, just for, for doing a target range or for deer hunting, you want to count out different targets. Makes a heck of a lot of sense. So I picked that up, too. Well, here's a look at a quick pass through that fire pit and around. I just kind of did the walkways a little bit and the driveway a little bit and over by... Um, over by Buck, where we built his thing. I actually picked up a couple more and I put them down somewhere. Now I gotta find those. Um, you know, these are all potential flat tires and holes in my feet and my kids' feet or whatever. Good to be gone. It was a good purchase. Uh, it's very difficult using it on uneven ground though. The the, uh, the wheels on this thing are just just give you a tiny bit of clearance and well you obviously want the magnet as close to the ground as possible so it picks up as much as possible but on this uneven rutted up ground it's difficult to use but as you can see worth it I told you I was gonna build a reducer just put a reducer on here and I happen to have this little scrap piece right on my table from uh, the buck house build how awesome is that so I can use that right now just to cover up so no bugs get in there um, I'm going to come back and I'm going to kind of shave a little opening right there. And uh, I've seen people where you take it and you flip it, you know, the opposite way. This isn't going to work with this one though. And shave a bigger hole so that way you can choose how much reduction you want. Whether it's just a tiny little hole or you want to have like a bigger opening. And they just flip it one side or the other. So maybe I won't end up using this piece for the reducer, but um, I'm super excited that I had something I didn't have to fire up the generator, get the saw out and cut just to cover that up so nothing gets in there before I get my bees. Okay, I'm up on top of the shipping container right now and I told you guys I was going to be doing some maintenance on this. I got a couple of uh, spots where the paint has bubbled up so I'm going to uh, attempt to take care of that by using that wire wheel, my drill and some Rust-Oleum paint, rust control spray enamel. Um, a couple of you guys talk to me about different products specifically I think uh, one was called Osfo Osflo uh, I don't remember what it was called but I couldn't find it in any of the hardware stores basically it's a rust converter um, I do have navel jelly but I don't think I'm gonna use that um, what I might do is end up buying this Os Osflo Osfo I guess it's called um, on Amazon but I want to see how much work this is going to be to try to scrape it away. It would be way easier if I could just get this loose paint out of the way. And then instead of having to worry about scraping all the rust away, just converting it and then spraying over the top of it. That would be great. So I'm going to give this a shot and I'll come back to you and show you how it worked out. Alright, I think it did a pretty good job. Uh, definitely not as easy as I would anticipate the Osfo being. But um, you know, it just took me a couple of minutes to scrape that away. I got another little spot over there. A couple of little spots and I'm gonna go ahead and spray paint it and hopefully that'll take care of it but I got a bunch of these spots like maybe I don't know 30 or 40 or 50 more so maybe the Osfo is gonna be the best idea um, I'll probably get a bottle of that and you know it'll keep for a while anyway so here's some nasty spots I got to work on as well just want to show you guys the before and I'll show you the after You know, the funny thing about this job is the more you do, the more you see that you need to do. So, I'm going to cut my losses here because this could take me literally a full day of uh, hard labor. So I'm going to try to lighten up the labor and I'm going to pick up that Osfo. I'm going to come in and just do a light scrape and then spray it and then paint it. And that should, uh, that should cut the time down quite a few hours. And it's not like it's that expensive. I think it's $15 for a bottle of this stuff. So I think it's probably well worth it. I'll give you a view here today. Absolutely beautiful day. It's up uh, probably 55 degrees out. And we got full sun, which is awesome. A uh, little windy, but not bad. I'm up here in just a t-shirt. 
just as an FYI on the stain, I'm gonna buy probably, I'm guessing three more gallons of that stuff, finish off the porch, and then I'm gonna go back through, and uh, at some point this year, I'm gonna stain the whole cabin again. This is coming up, I think May will be two years that it's been down here. So I'll stain it again, just make sure it's all the same color and looking decent. And I'll just kind of turn here as slowly as I can and show you where the beehive is. I'm just trying to give you some spatial relation. And then I'll try to spin back slowly again and show you again where I'm going to attempt to put the garden. Right down there where that tire is. So that's the plan. Back to Eden method if I can get the organic material to put down. If not, I'm going to just use pine needles. Let me know if you think that would be bad for the garden. I know pine needles are supposed to be acidic, so holler at me about that if you know better. All right, I was driving out of here to go home, and I realized that I forgot my uh, can of stain, and I wanted to make sure I was getting the exact same stuff. So I show it to you. It kind of cracks me up. Olympic maximum stain sealant in one. For your protection, prevents water damage and graying. Now check out some of these things. Enhance waterproofing protection. Advanced sunblock UV defense. Extends color life. Exclusive scuff guard technology. <laughs> scuff guard technology. Man, these manufacturers love to put the word technology into their product. Never thought I'd see it on stain, but so be it. Anyway, this is for your protection. I think I paid 33 or 34 dollars a gallon. Um, that seems to be quite a bit more expensive than I remember, you know, back 15 years ago. I realize when I say stuff like that, it's starting to sound like my dad. The bead! I broke the bead on my tire, not the seal. I knew it would come to me sooner or later. So I'm driving up out of here. Just wanted to uh, tell you guys thanks for watching and also just let you know a couple of thoughts. It seems like the more I do, the more I got to do. Um, I take one step forward, two steps back. It's crazy. Uh, but this is, I've just come to realize this is going to be a multi-year project. And by the time I'm done with all my projects, I'll have to go back through and start redoing some of the projects that I did. For instance, you know, the staining thing. I'll have to go back through and stain, restain the dock and restain the, the deck and all this other stuff. So um, it'll never be over when it comes to the garden. Um, from what I'm learning, it takes years to build up a good base when you're doing a Back to Eden garden. Um, so that's going to be a multi-year project, but, uh, you know, who knows how long we have left. This stuff looks like it's ready to collapse, but I've been thinking that for quite a while and they've been able to hold it off. I realize it's smoke and mirrors, but how long are the smoke and mirrors going to last? Your guess is as good as mine. So I'm going to just keep doing what I can do, plugging along, getting a little bit done, inching the ball forward every single week. Uh, you know, weather's been playing a big part in it. It seems like it's been nice during the week, and then it gets awful on the weekends, but, uh, and now I got my son's basketball game. I would have spent the night tonight, uh, but I got a 9 a.m. game that I have to coach, so uh, I can't do that. But I do plan on coming back down Sunday, and it's going to be, you know, partial fun day with my boy, partial work day, and uh, hopefully we get some more stuff done, and I'll have some more video for you either Sunday or Monday. All right, guys, please uh, don't forget, share the video, help me expand the audience. Uh, give me a thumbs up and uh, we'll catch you next time you guys last clip I promise just wanted to see if anybody knew of what I can do with these cylinders I would imagine they have value to somebody just not to me uh, they'd be willing to you know let these things go if somebody needs them and you know, if you got something you want to barter that'd be great too but I just don't want to throw them out because again I imagine they have some value to someone let me know